date before we recess? No, Your Honor. Issues uh, for the defense before we recess? Yeah, Judge, I think you were going to let me just perfect the record real quick, and it won't pack in a minute. Go ahead. Well, I don't think I was, but I will. Well, and we appreciate it. You've been very com accommodating. I know. And I'm not going to take advantage of it. But, I know uh, that. I'm smiling. Can't you see I'm smiling? <laughs> yes, ma'am. The, uh, just real quick, uh, we, we had asked a question, does anyone believe that police officers are incapable of misleading or exaggerating the um, uh, um, state objective and uh, on the basis that it asked the jury to prejudge and uh, uh, they cited Bennett versus the state uh, and Bennett, it was actually a hypothetical, it said, uh, asked the juror to consider if a police officer and a citizen each told a version of an occurrence, both of which were believable, believable would you believe the police officer uh, over the citizen? Um, that, that's not at all anywhere close to what we were asking. What we were asking went directly toward uh, someone we want to know if they would be biased in favor of police. Uh, that was the purpose of that, of that question. And so I think as worded, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was perfectly fine. The, Before uh, you go on, uh, if we're perfecting the record, we need to have the state's response to that, okay. if you don't mind, Mr. Kilgore. Yes, Mr. Boring. Judge, I don't believe he said, would anybody be biased in favor of law enforcement? I think he talked about the credibility of an officer over other, another witness. I would also cite to your honor uh, Leonard versus the state, which is 292 Georgia 214, the language in that case. Uh, during voir dire, prospective jurors Leonard sought to ask one prospective juror if she would weigh the testimony of law enforcement officers more heavily or consider an officer more truthful because of that occupation. Um, and then that was held to be properly excluded or disallowed by the court. Um, again, Leonard asked if the prospective juror would consider a witness to be more credible based on their profession. The court, again, did not allow the question, um, held that that was largely left to the uh, discretion of the trial court, um, and they held that it is not an abuse of the trial court's discretion to forbid question that improperly asked the veneer member to prejudge the credibility of witnesses. We believe that's what that question was doing. Now, I think there is a fine line here. And as Mr. Kilgore was allowed to do through juror number two, she has actual experience and things like that with law enforcement. He's properly allowed to go into that, uh, that issue then when it becomes an issue. But generally asking the entire jury panel uh, to prejudge the credibility of officers versus others is uh, properly disallowed by the court pursuant to Leonard as well. I stand by my ruling, and I think the record was clear. I overruled the objection. Mr. Kilgore. Yes, ma'am. The second uh, question that I propounded to, a uh, general question that I propounded to the jury was, is uh, if, uh, if anyone was leaning in favor of one side or the other, uh, and I stood back and I pointed at the state and the defense, and then I said, uh, in other words, are you leaning in favor of the state or of the defense? Um, and there was an objection to that. Again, I believe indicating that it uh, called for the uh, uh, jury to prejudge. Uh, at that point in time, I called attention to the fact that um, it was uh, hardly more than a restatement of the uh, statutory question, 1512-164-A-3, which asks, asks, is your mind perfectly impartial between the state and the accused? Um, so, if, so, um, that's a statutory question. I can get back up and I can restate that statutory question. Um, that's perfectly authorized, but, but more importantly, the question that I ask comes directly from the statute, which tells us what we can ask. And that's 15-12-133. In a criminal case, counsel for either party <coughs> shall have the right to acquire the individual prospective jurors, examine touching any matter or thing which would illustrate any interest of the prospective juror in the case, including any opinion as to which party ought to prevail, the relationship or acquaintance of the prospective juror with the parties or counsel, any fact or circumstances indicating any inclination, leaning, or bias which the prospective juror might have respecting the subject matter of the action or the counsel or parties thereto religious, social, or fraternal connections of the prospective juror. In short, I could have gone, I could have asked a question that went much, much further than the question that I asked. I could have asked them very directly, um, 
do you? Yeah. I'm sorry. Any opinion? Yeah. Do you do you have an opinion as to which party ought to prevail? According to the statute, that's exactly what the the purpose of this proceeding is for. We we can ask those questions uh, according to the statute and. What, what I ask is, uh, uses the language that they use in the statute, leaning. Are you leaning in favor of one side or the other, the state or the defense? So I think that was proper. So I would, uh, uh, I'm objecting to the, the court's ruling on that. And, and again, Judge, I, and I say this very uh, respect, respectfully, um, my, my concern is a little more than just being able to ask and propound that question. It's that here, at, at the very first opportunity uh, where we're addressing uh, these prospective jurors, the state's making objections which I believe are unfounded and, I, and we're being sustained and, and that is giving the imprimatur right off the bat that, that the uh, defense, we don't know what we're doing. We're not, we can't even ask uh, proper questions uh, in jury selection. Uh, and so uh, that, that is, that's what I want to put on the record. Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, I, I believe, and I'm citing to Ellis versus the state, which is 292 Georgia 276 2013 case. Um, questions that call for prejudgment are improper and voir dire. There is often a fine line between asking potential jurors how they would decide the case and questions that merely seek to expose bias or prejudice. The statute calls for allowing questions into uh, whether uh, there are facts known to these jurors or things like that that would lead them to lean to one side or another, things of that nature. I believe there's a big difference between asking like the statutory questions do and like some of the non-objectionable questions of Mr. Kilgore about is there anything because this child, uh, this involves a child death that you would be unable to be fair and impartial to both sides. I think this, however, are you leaning one side to one side or another is improper because that is on that fine line where it's not seeking to expose bias or prejudice, it's seeking to ask prejudgment, to ask them to go ahead and pick a side. And so uh, I believe that's, that's why the state's doing that judge. And I, I'm only objecting to questions that I think are objectionable. So I, I'm, I'm sorry they're being sustained. Are you? I'll quit doing it. I'm really, I, I think that's a, <laughs> do you a, want a, that's a southern saying, that's like saying bless your heart. Yeah, so. well don't, don't do that to me either, thank you. <laughs> sorry. All right, I stand by my ruling. I find the question to be overly broad. I find the court, the, the court has already asked it's essentially an identical question. I find that the information can be uh, 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 derived from the jury through more particularized questions uh, that would reveal uh, uh, bias, prejudice, leanings um, that are more specifically curated and detailed to this particular case and they haven't heard evidence and uh, all they've heard is a bill of indictment and the bill of indictment recites um, allega uh, allegations of facts that are violations of laws uh, the law of the state of Georgia for a juror to have a bias in favor of the law is proper citizen behavior for a juror to say, yeah, I've got a leaning that I think a murder is wrong. Well, they don't have any evidence to know if that occurred or not. So to ask them the question that broadly moves into putting them in the posture of judging whether they agree with the law or not. And you can ask that specifically, and that would be a grounds for strike for cause, but that's not what you've done. So I st stand by my ruling, and I note the exception of the defense as to both of these rulings that you've developed your record on. And um, I'll go through it again. Anything else for the state, Mr. Boyne? No, Your Honor. And anything else for the defense, Mr. No, Kilgore? All right, gentlemen, lady, be here at 9 in the morning. And Lord willing, we'll have the juror here, jurors here, and we'll move out. <laughs> Y'all have a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you.